I'm River Bay, and welcome to my gun kingdom. In this video, we have a lot to go over with this Armor Light um, Super SAS uh, 308 sniper rifle. Now, um, I did a full review on the first video that I did, zeroing this rifle in at 100 yards. So if you haven't seen that yet, I'll leave a link at the end of this video that you can click on and watch that full review. But, so we're gonna continue kind of that review, but we're gonna talk a lot about the scope now that we'll be graduating up to further distance with this. And what I recommend, you know, if, if you don't do a lot of long distance shooting, and the last time I did a lot of long distance shooting was when I was in my late teens or early 20s. Uh, my dad went out and bought me a uh, Weatherby uh, 243 with a three by nine scope on it. And my friend and I were hunting groundhogs up to 600 yards. So, you know, when you're younger, um, your, your eyesight is much better, um, your reflexes are much better, and, but as we, as we get older, if you're getting into the same, you know, age uh, group that I am in, so um, now we need to practice more. And, you know, we don't want to discourage ourselves when we start out shooting long distance too. So, um, now I do have a, um, I did change out my trigger on here to help me out with my shooting. Um, and that, this is a Geisley Super Tricon two-stage trigger. So it's very crisp on the second stage. Uh, so that helps me out a lot. And also I, I moved up to a, a, like a military scope. And we'll get more into that later. But, um, you know, this is a great SHTF rifle uh, for long range. And this is the one that I choose for my arsenal. Um, out of five uh, that I have for SHTF. And the reason I chose this rifle is because I know it's very overlooked out there. And some people follow the trend of what the US military adopts as their rifle. But like I said in the first video, um, there was things you know that happened uh, back then in 2004 when this gun was being tested um, in the trials. Um, it, you know, it wasn't the gun's fault. It wasn't the gun that failed. The gun, you know, passed every test that the U.S. military put it through. And I think to myself, you know, you know, why did Armor Light put in their, you know, put in this sniper rifle if they knew they were probably not going to be picked? Well, if you think about it, they could go on and sell it to other militaries around the world like they did, and also they sold it to the Brazilian police to guard their Olympics one year. So it was a way to get a free evaluation and a free test, and they knew the U.S. military was gonna put it through a rigorous testing, and it would you know, make or break. And this gun passed everything that the U.S. military put it through. So the only reason it didn't get picked was because at the time, Armalite just wasn't a big manufacturing plant. And they just couldn't produce a lot of rifles real fast. But when they sold to other militaries around the world, the, the uh, demand is probably wasn't as high as the US military was gonna be. But they were able to send that paperwork to those other militaries around the world and also the Brazilian police and say, hey, look, this was tested by the U.S. military. It passed all the tests. There's nothing wrong with it. They just didn't pick us because we're not a big military plant. You know, so maybe the Brazilian police only ordered 100 of them or 150. Well, that's a lot easier to produce than 150,000 in a short amount of time. So, you know, we don't want to overlook this as a sniper rifle in our SHTF arsenal. This is actually a perfect rifle to have. And it's a reasonable price. I mean, without the scope and without the bipod, you can pick this gun up for around $3,000 now at the time this video is being made. So it's a great opportunity to have something in your arsenal for SHTF that's long range. And this is the one that I recommend. I mean, it's capable of half inch groups out to 1,000 meters, which 
translates to 1,093 yards, all right? But in order for us to be able to be proficient and keep up with the, what this gun can do, we have to practice a lot. This gun can outperform me. It can probably outperform you, maybe. But if we practice a lot, then we catch up with what this gun can, is capable of doing. And we don't want to get discouraged with ourselves and, and immediately zero the rifle in and then at 100 yards and then we go out and we shoot at 600 yards. We don't want to do that because we could be discouraged. So what I say is take it in graduations. Take it in steps. Like we zeroed at 100 and today we're at the 200 yard range as you can see behind me here. And so we're going to start at 200 yard range and see if we're just as good as we were at 100. So watch the first video that I hit these little tiny bullseye at 100. But you know, all right, so that was only 100 yards. What can you do at 600 yards, right? Well, we gotta practice before we can get out there. Okay, especially if we're not shooting regularly at long distances. But maybe I'm wrong that maybe there's a few viewers out there watching right now that say, hey, I shoot 1,000 meters, you know, every other day. Well, that's fine. You'll probably be good at the, with this gun and be able to keep up with it. All right, but this video is to help us to understand what we need to do to prepare ourselves to go long distances. So this is a military scope and the measurements are in milliradians, okay, or MRADs. All right, and you might think, whoa, I might have to take a class on that. But actually you can go and download a PDF file. They have a little cheat cards that you can get. But at the top of the card, you'll notice that all those rifles are zeroed in at 100 yards okay so make sure that you zero this long distance range precision rifle in at 100 yards because that's where those cards start at and then you can go down and, and look at the list now i can pull out my cell phone and get on hordendy's ballistic bc calculator but the problem is with those calculators in an shtf scenario the first thing that's going to go down are the cell towers, okay? We're not going to be able to have cell, cell phone use, all right? So we, we probably want to either memorize those numbers, and uh, MRADs are a lot easier to memorize the numbers. They're shorter than the MOA numbers, all right? So they're a lot easier, okay? It sounds daunting at first to learn milliradians, okay? Um, especially if you're not like using these scopes all the time, but you have to practice with it. it that's all it takes is practice, practice, practice. And, uh, but that's what we're gonna do today. Um, we're actually gonna use uh, my cell phone and we're gonna go on there and we're gonna dial in the feet per second, which is, uh, this is actually 2660 feet per second, okay? All right, now it says if you're zeroed at 100 yards, it says at 200 yards, there's a little over four inch drop, 300 yards, 15 inch drop, 500 yards, 62 inch drop, all right? But what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the phone and we're gonna go to that Hordendy's uh, BC calculator and, um, and we're gonna put in the feet per second and then we're gonna put in the yards and today we have no wind so we don't have to correct anything on windage. All right, so what I've did in the first video, if you notice, and it was real easy, you don't have to understand anything about milliradians uh, to zero in at 100 yards. It's just going to click here and click there. All right, but what I did when I got home is I put my zero stops in. I put my zero stop in for my elevation and my zero stop in for my uh, windage. So basically, I can take this, let me turn this so you can see, it's at zero right now, and I can't take it down any further than zero there, okay? I can't go any further. But what I can do is I can go up in elevation, but I can't go down in elevation after it hits zero. So no matter where I turn this thing, I can always go back to my zero, which is 100 yards, okay? No matter how many times I turn this back and forth. Same thing with the, vin uh, the windage. I can turn it past zero, left or right okay so it's a little bit different than windage okay you just can't go down in elevation if you're shooting under a hundred yards which you probably wouldn't be if you have a long-range rifle you'd probably go to your 
your 5.56 five, or 223 if you're shooting under 100 yards, right? So this would be 100 yards or more, all right? So I can go, I can go all the way around and then always come back to my zero marks on both the elevation and the windage. And how you change that is you just have to follow the manual. And if you don't, all the scopes usually come with a manual, some don't, but if they don't, they'll offer a, a, a PDF file that you can download. But they're real easy. Uh, this scope came with a couple Allen wrenches and instructions on how to do it. So there's three set screws. So you loosen up the three set screws on both the elevation and the windage and just pop those out and then just follow the instructions on how to set your zero stop, okay? So it's pretty easy. Um, uh, it only took me like uh, 15 minutes to, to change both of them to the zero stop, all right? So I'm gonna go out there and set up the targets at 200 yards and I'll set the GoPro up there. We got the uh, spotting scope with us today. And um, another thing is, is uh, the guy that I bought this rifle from, he sent me a ton. There must be 20 clips in here. And on the first video, I, I used all three of these, tried them out, make sure they work. And then I've got more of them in here. And these are steel construction. These are great. These are awesome. These are a lot better than, uh, than aluminum ones. They're just so much more durable. And that's what you want for an SHTF uh, scenario. Um, so let's get started and get shooting. Um, there's one thing that I mentioned in the first video I did here with the Super SAS um, about this uh, firearm. And I think it's real important to know that, you know, there was two things that were better about this firearm than there was uh, for the one that was chosen by the U.S. military. And the two things that this has that's better than the one that was chosen back around 2020 or 2004 was the, it has a huge bolt catch on here. Uh, that's fail safe. Um, it's a lot larger than the, the gun that was chosen. And then also it has a slam fire proof um, uh, spring on the firing pin. It's a real heavy duty uh, spring. And uh, so those are the two things that it had that was, that was better than the gun that was actually chosen. Okay, so we want to make sure our lead sled's nice and tight and we're strapped in here. Um, now the reason I don't use the bipod uh, is because I'm going to take advantage of this lead sled. And like I said, it's just, just nicer just to start out with something very firm holding the gun until you practice a lot. So what I like to do to find my target is to take it all the way down. Now this is a 4.5 by 28 scope. Okay, so I see the target now. So I'm gonna raise it up. All right. Get this rubber foot back here as far as possible so you can get your shoulder into the gun. All right, so there it is here. Now this scope has a side focus on it so I'm just going to play around with it at 4.5 here and see what it does here all right so let's go up to 28 power now and we're going to watch it as we zoom in here all right so like I said we're going to use our cell phone here and I have the Hordendy app on here. Now, this is gonna come up automatically, you gotta be careful. Now, I've already uh, put in my um, feet per second, which is 2660. Um, but down here, where you look at, where you have to adjust your scope, it's in MOA, so you actually have to tap on that and go to MRADS and set that. And we're at 200 yards yet. You have to dial in 200 yards. So I'm not gonna worry about the windage because there's no wind. So it says 0.64 MRADs here. All right, 
so we come up to here and we move these two four six all right oh that's much better all right I'll take our side focus this has illumination on it but the illumination isn't illumination isn't that good um, and there's dots in between it goes up from 1 through 11 on the illumination it, you're always going to have to use the highest setting but in between each setting like say 1 and 2 there's a dot in between to where it can be turned off so that way you can keep it next to the favorite um, number that you like for illumination so I adjusted my side focus and it's on the left side of the scope here uh, this adjusts the windage of course so this is set at zero and I did raise my elevation up to um, I'll check it again but I think it was 6.4 now this thing always goes back when you turn on this Hordendy um, BC calculator it always goes back to MOA so you got to go in there and hit MRADS again yeah, 0.64. <clears throat> All right, so I had, I put in 0.64. Let's see how we're at. We're gonna shoot at the upper target. All right, All right looking good. All right, <clears throat> we're in the safe mode. I'm gonna double up, and then what we're gonna do today? These these three right here, these three magazines right here, these all turned out really well. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use those today. Uh, I'm gonna have to put some kind of uh, marker on there so I know that they're good. But let's pull another one out of the box. All right, so let's go ahead and load up here and double up on our air protection. We're gonna put five in. And for a bonus, there's a hanging steel plate out there to the right of this target. You don't see it here, but I will go out there and put that GoPro on there before we finish up and shoot a few into that steel target there. All right. Here we go. Safety's off. Okay, pretty close. <sighs> pretty close to dead on in the bullseye. So that's how easy it is to adjust these uh, uh, measurements on your scope. So each each little click here, each little mark is 0.2 so I went up to 2 or I went up to I'm sorry I went up to 6.4 as close as I get it and I'm going to go up one more and see what that does but it got us really close and it hit in the bullseye 200 yards so All right, so I'm putting the crosshairs. Now, you would have to memorize these numbers. So for 200, if you're using the same exact scope and the same exact gun here, uh, you would have to memorize them or either that or download that uh, PDF file on uh, your ballistics chart for this 308 and then uh, and make sure it, it's for your feet per second and everything so it just it's just easier to use a cell phone as long as your cell phone works but um, in an shtf scenario your cell phone's not going to work so it's better just to memorize them all right so let's 
put the crosshairs right in the middle again. Here we go. Okay, I, was, I probably pulled that one to the right here. Like I said, there's no wind. Here we go. That hit slightly above. Okay, here we go. That was in the bullseye. Here we go. Okay, that's it. Let's check the spotting scope. Group that we got there. not the gun it's me it's the shooter so you know I I was shooting tighter groups at 100 yards that's why I say you've got to practice in graduations you just can't st zero your rifle in at 100 yards and then go right to 600 yards you got to take it in steps and practice until you can shoot this gun is capable of doing half inch groups so stay at the 200 yard range until you get half inch groups all right but i'm going to take it back at one click down there i think that's probably closer to 0.64 mrads okay all right, so let's turn it on safe. Uh, that magazine worked out all right. At first I thought it was bad, but... So I'm gonna put that in a good pile. Take out another one in here in the box. Doesn't matter here. All right. And that steel plate, let me see if I can see that steel plate here. It's to the right, but there's a lot of weeds in the way. Oh, I can see it. Oh, yeah. But that's going to be so easy. That's as big as the, that's as big as round as a target. It's like 12 inches. You know, we want to challenge ourselves here for a little bit. I mean, it's fun to shoot the steel. But let's see. Let's shoot another five here. I like to keep it organized as much as possible. Um, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and load five in this other magazine. Check this one out. It's always good practice to put in and out your safety flag. Uh, right now I'm pretty lucky there's nobody else here at the gun range this morning. Uh, but it's a good idea just to practice, you know. Uh, that way when you do have somebody shooting next to you, you know, they know that you're being safe. And 
so it's a good habit to get into. All right, let's get back on target here. Get us close. Well, let's stay on that upper target. <clears throat> let's go ahead and load one in here. We're on safe. Check that. Okay. There's one in there. Safety's off. Putting the bulls or put I'm sorry, I'm putting the crosshairs right in the center of the bullseye. Here we go. Did that shoot high and to the right? I think it did. And that was after I uh, lowered it. Shoot another one. Safety's off. Here we go. Here we go. Well, if we notice, we're shooting them all over to the right here. There's more to the right than there is in the center. So let's go over one. Uh, okay, we're going over one to the left here. And let's go down to the lower target now. We shot enough in that upper target. Okay, lower target. The bullseye right in, it's a smaller bullseye now. And it's orange. Here we go. Oh. And I said I moved it over to the left, right? So let's move it back. I think there's one more in there. It looks like there is. Safety's off. Here we go. Okay, that's better. Yep. Okay, we know that magazine works. Put that in a good pile. In the first video, I talk about squeezing the trigger. So, you know, you want to squeeze it so slightly that it surprises you. You want to try to keep your eyes open as you're squeezing the trigger, too. Don't anticipate the recoil. All right. In safe mode. Okay. Let's 
stand on that lower target. There we go. A little better. Takes practice. Here we go. Looks like I went through the same hole there, I'm not sure. <clears throat> Here we go. It's a little bit lower. Stay at that range that you're shooting at and practicing at until you're satisfied with your shots. Here we go. There we go. That was it. All right, we'll shoot five more, and then we'll go to uh, we'll go. I'll set up the GoPro for the uh, the steel. So I'm not satisfied with my grouping. Um, we're gonna try five more, but. Another thing is, is to let the barrel cool down a little bit. Okay, you know, at least five minutes. So that's what I'll do and then we'll come back. Okay, so while we're waiting on our barrel to cool down, um, you notice that very first shot on the upper target when the barrel was completely cold it hit right in the bullseye and then as the barrel warmed up I kept firing over to the to the right but that's that's good that that happened because you have to know where your gun is shooting okay um, I don't know if I want to stay on that I'm just checking out the uh, I like, I like how that bottom target splatters when you hit it. It's, I think it's slightly better than the upper target, but let me see how we're doing on time here. Oh, we got a couple more minutes to let the barrel cool down. and It's still warm. So, um, you have to experiment around to see if five minutes is going to be long enough. But once we hit five minutes here, we'll uh, load up. They're pretty close now. I'd say we're about a minute out. So. It's in safe mode.
and it's probably about a few seconds now. All right, so we're going to stay on that lower target. After we shoot this uh, next five here, we'll we'll walk down there and I'll talk to you a little bit when I get down there, and I'll point it. I'll point the GoPro at the the steel plate we have down there. Okay, so stay tuned. So what I would do, you know, unless I really improve here with these next five shots, with a, which I doubt, because like I said, this gun outperforms me, so... Um, all right but until I'm satisfied I would stay I'm gonna I would stay here if I came back and practice with this probably in the next video I do leave a uh, comment down below if you want me to go right to the 300 yard range it's just over slightly to the left we have a small area back there that's 100 yards further than the uh, 200 yard that we're looking at here. But, uh, so let me know in the comment section if you want to go right to 300. I don't think you want to see me practice again at 200. Uh, but the way I'm shooting here today at 200, I don't think I'd be doing really that much better at 300 that's for sure check my side focus again oh it's bright on I like it I'm going to turn the illumination on to the highest setting and see what that does it's a cloudy day Oh, it helps a little bit. Let's leave it on. Eh, not that much. I'm going to turn it off. Okay, it's off. Okay, the barrel's nice and cool now. Safety's off. Here we go. I think that hit right at the bottom edge of that bullseye. Turn the safety on. Let me look in the spotting scope. Yeah. So see, see the benefit of letting your your uh, barrel cool down. Because when it was warm, it was shooting over to the right. Okay, so. doesn't hurt to take your thumb and check that safety make sure it's on while you're moving your lead sled around okay all right so Safety's coming off. 
Here we go. Safety's on. Now let's see, We've got to get lined up to see where I hit. Did I go through that same hole? I won't know until I edit the film, but that shot that I did right at the bottom of that bullseye looks like it got bigger. I don't know. You know, take your time. When you're practicing, don't be in a hurry to even the, know this can engage multiple targets. You know, being a semi-automatic, you just don't want to heat up your barrel while you're practicing. <clears throat> okay, safety's coming off. Here we go. Safety's on. That's looking like it went through the bullseye that time. Okay, check to make sure the safety's on. It's on. All right. Yep. Well, we finally hit the bullseye. What's the size of that bullseye? Would you say that's the size of a quarter? I know it's bigger than a dime. It's probably the size of a quarter. All right. Our hard work today is paying off. And if you're still watching the video, I appreciate you watching. and. You know, make sure you hit that subscribe button and um, hit that like button for me. Uh, it's like giving me a tip. If you if you want to tip me, the best way to tip me is give me a like. Give me a like down there and uh, leave a comment and let me know if you have any ideas that you want me to do in a video. You know, I listen to my viewers, so. Okay, we haven't been too fast at heating up this barrel, so what do you say we put in another shot there? Safety's coming off. Here we go. Where'd it go? <laughs> Safety's on. The sun's coming out. Okay, safety's off. Here we go.
Safety's on. And we're out. Take the clip out. That one's good. We got a big pile of good magazines here. It looks like it hit the bullseye there. Right next to that other one. Yep, sure did. Okay. Okay, so it really pays off to let your barrel cool down here. Um, so to recap the Horton the BC calculator, it was it was dead on because I set it exactly at 0.64 MRADs milliradians. Okay. Um, that's, that's good to know, but you have to memorize them, really. You can, like I said, you can get a PDF file downloaded and you can get those cards, that, but they're all zeroed at 100 yards, and that's where most of your precision rifles are zeroed. I would say most of them. I'm not gonna generalize and say all of them, but. Uh. All right, so what we're gonna do now for a bonus is we are going to I'm going to go down there. I'm going to I'm going to talk to you when I get down there about that steel. Okay, there it is. Wow, I can see it good. Okay, I'm going to take my side focus and get it in focus as much as possible here. That looks good. Yeah, we'll hit that thing, but it's going to be so easy, but we'll watch the impact. At least we'll have fun doing that, right? Uh, but our accuracy, <clears throat> we're finishing on a bullseye the size of a quarter. So we did good today. So we can pat ourselves on the back. And if you want to see me shoot at 300 yards, just it'll just take one person to leave a comment. Hey, River, shoot at 300 yards, please. I'd like to see you do that. All right? So... If I get one person that says that, I will make another video with this Super Sass. All right. All right. So I hope I helped you out today. Um, but if you want to stay, stay tuned and watch me hit that steel target, I'm going to go down there and I'll talk to you when I get down there at the GoPro. All right. So I'll, I'll meet you down there. This is at 200 yards. Okay. Um, the same distance that we were shooting at today. But anyway, when you shoot at a, a steel target, you really want them to swing like that because what that does when they swing is it deflects the, um, the fragments of the bullet downwards, okay? And you don't want a pedestal uh, when you're shooting at steel either. Now I'm talking about if it was closer, but we have a steel range here. And at our steel range, we don't have any targets that were that's within. 10 yards, 20 yards within a pedestal. Okay, so you want them, you want them to swing. Okay, so anyway, uh, let's. Uh, we're we're doing pretty good with our shot placement today, so I don't think we have to worry about hitting the GoPro. So, uh, but I will be shooting off to the right of the GoPro. It looks like about a foot and a half. All right, to hit the steel here. But this is this a bonus for everybody that stayed with me through the entire uh, video. Appreciate you watching, so let's get to this. Okay, so we've let our barrel cool down, and we uh, had to let our GoPro cool down, too. I noticed one day, uh, a couple days ago, I was making a video out here, and uh, I noticed when I got up to the target <clears throat> that the GoPro had turned off due to it being overheat it <clears throat> and that's something I didn't know a GoPro would do but it was real hot to the touch so when that Sun is beating on it it's pretty it's pretty hot so it needs an umbrella to it so let's go ahead and double up but this is a uh, this is a bonus for everybody that stuck around with me here and, and watch the complete video I appreciate that and uh, So now we'll shoot the steel target there at 200 yards.
and we're we're a pretty good shot today so we won't hit the GoPro but we'll be placing we'll send that bullet on the right side of the GoPro stand there Okay, so I'm going to put my crosshairs, change glasses here, but I'm going to put my crosshairs right in the center, of course. But you might be wondering, boy, do I have to hit a quarter size bullseye at 600 yards eventually? No, you look at that steel plate we're, we're looking at right now, that's what you're that's what you're going to be shooting or maybe smaller than that so that's going to be considered a bullseye when you get out to range like that your your bullseye gets bigger okay but we are going to place the crosshairs right in the center of that bullseye though okay this will be fun so let's load uh, five and let's take out another clip we haven't used so we can yeah, let's use this one. I'm gonna wipe it off. It seems kind of. There we go. And then I'm eventually gonna have to mark these, which ones that I've tested. But actually, you know, really to get a good test on these is to load them all the way max and see if they hang up or anything. You have a gas valve up here on these uh, Super SAS that you have to check. There's, uh, there's two positions up there, suppressed and non-suppressed fire. So make sure you're, if you're not shooting with the silencer, you know, make sure you're shooting unsuppressed up there on the gas valve. Otherwise you won't have enough gas blowback to eject your shells, okay? So it might not be your mag that's hanging up. So make sure that's set correctly first. And of course we're shooting this gun unsuppressed. Now let's shoot five at this target. This will be fun. We worked hard at zero on the rifle in it, or not zeroing in at 200 yards, but um, we don't, we zeroed in at 100 yards, okay? in the first video but today we we had to work hard with the MRADs and understanding those so but once you play around with this it's it's pretty easy okay we're in there okay it's in safe mode Okay, we'll readjust here just a tiny bit. Okay, we're going to enter. We're going to aim at the center. Of that steel plate. Okay, here we go. I would say it's probably about 12 inches in diameter. Here we go. Easy, right? I see the GoPro still standing up. Put it in safe mode. Check my check my foot back here. All right. Safety's off, here we go. Well, I can hear it. Here we go. Safe mode.
aiming right in the center of the plate. Safety's off. Here we go. All right, that was it. But I appreciate you watching. Um, hope you enjoyed shooting that steel there. Um, but let me know in the comment section uh, below before you turn off the video. Uh, let me know if you want me to shoot at 300 yards and I'll do that. All right. Um, and then also um, hit that subscribe button. Uh, always more future content coming up. Hit that like button, share the video with your friends and uh, don't forget to leave me a comment say hi all right thanks for watching